All right, welcome back. Here comes a, another good damping problem from chapter five. Uh, this one's 29, number 29 out of the book, and I'm just going to read part of it here. It says, a force of two pounds stretches a spring one foot. A force of two pounds stretches a spring one foot. K is two. What's funny now is they changed the poundage. Now they say a mass weighing 3.2 pounds is attached to the spring. Okay, so now I have a mass that weighs 3.2 pounds. Of course, we put gravity here, mass times gravity. Anyway, we find out the mass is 0.1. Now there's this sentence again. <clears throat> the system is immersed in a medium that offers a damping force. That's the damping force. It offers a damping force numerically equal to 0.4 times the instantaneous velocity. The damping force is 0.4 times the instantaneous velocity. That's a fancy way of telling me beta is 0.4. So I have my m, my beta, my k, and there's my differential equation. It also has a couple initial conditions. What did they say? Uh, <clears throat> the mass is initially released from rest from a point one foot above equilibrium. Initially released from rest meant there was no initial velocity. That's funny, but the point from which it was released was one foot above equilibrium. So we pulled it up one foot above equilibrium and just let it go without an initial push, no initial velocity. An initial distance, no initial velocity. All right, well, here we go. We do the auxiliary equation. Um, and I you do the quadratic formula. You know, you can do it with these numbers, uh, but you could multiply by 10 and uh, get rid of these decimals and, and do the quadratic formula with, with different numbers. Anyway, you do get these roots. And with these complex roots, we're in an under damp situation. Um, but, and, and here's how you write your answer. E to the negative 2t, c1, cosine 4t, c2, you know that. Uh, in order to find c1 and c2, I'm going to need these initial conditions, and in order to use these initial conditions, I need x prime, and x prime is a product rule now, so it got a little lengthy there. I took the derivative of the first, I wrote down the second, plus write down the first, take the derivative of the second, chain rules going on there. Anyway, let's do this. Uh, to find c1 and c2, you plug a 0 in the x equation and you get negative 1. Let me try that. Plugging 0 in here, e to the 0 is a 1, cosine of 0 is a 1, sine of 0 is a 0, basically c1 is negative 1. That was nice. Plugging uh, 0 into the derivative equation, we get a 0. Okay. Plugging 0 into this derivative equation, we get uh, e to the 0, that's negative 2, times c1, that's a 1, negative 2, c1. Oh, I know c1, all right, hang on. Uh, that's a 0, that's a 1, that's a 0, I'm plugging in a 0 for t, and that's a 1, so I get a 4c2. Plugging in a 0 for t led me to this. Uh, zero for x prime. I'm plugging in a negative one for the c1 there. That'll be a positive two. When I move it over here, it's a negative two. And so I just discovered that c2 is negative a half. So I have my answer. x is e to the negative 2t, c1. Oh, I'm sorry. c1 is negative one. Sorry. <clears throat> negative 1, cosine 4t, and negative a half, sine 4t. This is the equation of motion. This is the equation of motion for this underdamped situation. But we do like what's called the alternative form. And maybe you remember from the alternative form, you can get a, a is the amplitude. Uh, well, in this case, it's part of the amplitude. It is c1 squared plus neg uh, c2 squared, square rooted. It's Pythagorean's theorem. That is a 1 plus a 1 fourth. That's the square root of 5 fourths, or I could call that the square root of 5 over 2. Square root of 5 fourths, or the square root of 5 over the square root of 4, which is 2. Square root of 5 over 2. Cool, that's my A. 
in order to find that phase angle phi, I'm gonna go up here, I think. That phase angle phi is, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, look, I got these, these, these C1 and C2 are negative, so the way you plot this, uh, C2 is on the X, and so C2 is a negative one-half, C1 is a negative one here, and so C2 is negative a half, C1 is negative one, and so this is my phase angle. I'm in quadrant three. Of course, if I just plugged it into my formula, I would say that uh, phi is the tangent inverse of C1 over C2, C1 over C2. Well, that's going to be a tangent inverse of negative 1 over negative 1 half. That's a positive 2. If I do that, that's my phi. But, but, but my calculator gives me an answer in quadrant 1. Uh, that's that same old number. I got that a couple times. That is um, <clears throat> 1.107. 1.107. That's my phase angle in radians. But that's in quadrant 1, and that's not correct. Um, we know from those negative values that I'm actually in quadrant three, so I should add pi to this. Add pi to this. So that results in a phase angle of 4.249. Wow, that's awesome. We got our amplitude, we got our phase angle, we can write the alternative form. The alternative form is the amplitude square root of five over two e to the negative two t it's a diminishing amplitude, actually. And then I'm going to write the sine function. My omega t is the 4t plus the phase angle, uh, 4.249. This, this alternative form is equivalent to this form above. Uh, we prefer the alternative form. Um, if I was to graph this... Uh, Sort of running out of room here, but <clears throat> I might just graph it right here for you. Let's see. Hang on now. It was released at negative 1. Remember, that's 1 foot above equilibrium. <laughs> and it was just released. And uh, so it, 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 the spring pulled it back, and it was damped. So the amplitude is diminishing, but it is underdamped, and it's diminishing forever. You know, I draw this picture, it's kind of exaggerated. When you draw it on a graphing calculator, it dies out quicker than this. It looks like it dies out quicker than this. Again, the amplitude is sort of this, is actually this decreasing exponential function. If I drew this decreasing exponential function, it would hit these, this is, that would be the diminishing amplitude of this. Uh, that is, uh, uh, square root of 5 over 2 e to the negative 2t. And if I did the negative of that, that would be the underside amplitude here. So definitely an underdamped picture, an underdamped equation, alternative form. Uh, they did ask one interesting question. This video is getting a little long, but let's try this. The question was, when does it pass through equilibrium? What was the question? Find the first time it passes through equilibrium heading upward. The first time it passes through equilibrium heading upward. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. <clears throat> you know, if well, the question is when does it pass through equilibrium, we should uh, set this equal to zero. I want to set the alternative form equal to zero. Okay, setting the alternative form. Uh, of course, <clears throat> I could divide by that, I could divide by that, and really this is about when does the sine function equal zero. And uh, the angle, when does the sine function equal zero? So I like to say that the sine function equals zero at zero, pi, two pi, three pi, negative pi, negative two pi. I mean, there's a lot of places where the sine function equals zero. As you can tell, there's a lot of places where we pass through equilibrium. So there's a many answers. 
They want it the first time heading upward. Now, hang on. This is the first time, but look at that. That's heading downward. <laughs> Remember, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's heading downward. Uh, that's heading upward. So I'm really looking for that time. Uh, when it, so I could use my graph and calculator and try to find that time, but let's see. I'm looking for the second positive answer, you know. So what I'd be doing, what am I doing? I would set this angle equal to these angles. So the angle is this. The sine function equals zero at these places and more. Uh, I'm setting my angle equal to this. Uh, hang on. So if I set this equal to zero or any of these negative angles and I subtracted the four, I would get negative answers. If I set it equal to zero and subtracted the 4.249, I'd get a negative answer. If I set it equal to pi and subtracted, the, I would get a negative answer. If I set it equal to 2 pi and subtracted this 4.249, that would be my first positive answer, which is this. And that's actually not what I want. I want that second positive answer. So I think I'm setting it equal to 3 pi. I'm going to subtract the 4.249, I'm going to divide by 4, and that's the answer I'm looking for. That's the first time it passes through equilibrium heading upward. Uh, by the way, that turns out to be 1.29 seconds. Wow, that was fun. Uh, good luck. I'm going to post some assignment for you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for working hard.